द साइंस एंड सिम्टम्स ऑफ रायनोट्स सिंड्रोम और रायनोट्स डिसीज इट इंक्लूड्स कलर चेंजेस द कलर चेंजेस आई ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन दैट फर्स्ट इट बिकम पेल और वाइट अपेयरेंस देन देर विल बी ब्लूइश अपेयरेंस ड्यू टू लैक ऑफ ऑक्सीजनेशन देन वेन द वस्कुलेशन इज री एस्टाब्लिश इट बिकम्स रेड कलर so the color changes it starts from white blue red then the next features that you can see is numbness or tingling sensations the numbness or tingling sensation can be observed in case of rhinoids disease another feature is coldness or chillness the uh, extremities will feel the coldness or extreme coldness will be feel then pain or discomfort the pain or discomfort that is mainly due to decreased vascularization then throbbing throbbing or stinging sensation throbbing or stinging sensation again that is due to lack of oxygenation then sensitivity to temperature changes when there is temperature variation occurs there will be sensitivity so when the uh, uh, when the cold extremities when we uh, when the person is exposed to heat that time the revascularization is occurs and the person become red in appearance so uh, there will be sensitivity to temperature then emotional triggers emotional triggers actually emotional triggers is not a signs and symptom is a predisposing factor then gradual return to normal color that is uh, normal uh, vascularization uh, appearance or a normal uh, circulation will be reestablished after some time uh, when the person is uh, removed from the situation or when the person is removed from the excessive cold then the uh, slowly gradually returns the normal color of the skin so that is the signs and symptoms of rhinoids disease here uh, usually the uh, coldness pallor pain numbness tingling sensation everything that you have to remember okay. diagnostic measures of rhinoids disease in that history here we are assessing the vascular history or cardiac history or the hypertensive history of the patient family and in next is the physical examination in physical examination we are observing the signs and symptoms of the patient the color changes pallor numbness tingling then pain all these things we will assess then the cold stimulation test it is an important test for the uh rhinoids disease so here what we are doing is here a small temperature measuring device is attached to finger what we are doing we are doing the a small temperature uh, measuring tap will be attached to our finger and then the hands are placed in ice water to trigger the symptoms and then it will be removed during this time the tap will measure the temperature of the finger and when it is raw, uh, when it is returned to the normal temperature of the finger so what happens normally within 15 minutes the temperature of the finger become normal but in case of rhinoids disease it takes more than 20 minutes to become normal temperature so that is the test called a stimulation test here we are exposing to the ice water to induce or uh, trigger the symptoms of the patient and when it take more than 20 minutes to return to the normal temperature by assessing a measuring tap we are concluding that the person have rhinoids disease this is the example here uh, you can see that the person is exposed to cold water after that we are measuring the 
temperature of the finger okay uh, and uh, along with this diagnostic measures you can assess the um, rheumatic factor rheumatic history is present or uh, autoimmune disorder is present that also you have to assess okay next is the management of rhinot's disease so in the management we can uh, move the management into different different headings first one lifestyle modification which all are the lifestyle modification the person have to do uh, if the patient have rhinot's disease for example stop smoking uh, stop caffeine avoid triggering factors all those things the person have to follow in daily life that's why we are saying lifestyle modifications then medications medications especially the calcium channel blockers all those things you have to give to the patient then avoiding triggering triggers avoiding triggering factors means exposure to cold okay then biofeedback therapy biofeedback therapy also good for rhinot's disease then occupational changes if Uh, the patient has the uh, history of machinery use or vibrating machinery use the person can change the occupation okay then the uh, surgery in the severe cases so we can see one by one here uh, the general measures the person have to do or lifestyle modification the person have to follow and the triggering factors the person have to avoid so here the stop the person have to stop smoking avoid caffeine caffeinated food items then uh, avoid medications that cause tightening the blood vessels then keep the body warm avoiding exposure to cold wearing mittens or gloves in outdoors or when handling cold items okay the person have to use the mittens in order to prevent the exposure to cold then we are comfortable roomy shoes and wool socks wool socks so that will help to uh, prevent entry of cold okay so uh, the person have to wear the uh, or have, the person have to keep the body warm by wearing the mittens or the socks or the uh, footwear etc next thing the medications have to be used the calcium channel blockers that is very important drugs that is used in rhinot's disease okay calcium channel blockers that will help to reduce spasm especially the uh, nifedipin amlodipine diltiazepam are the group of drugs or the drugs that can be used as a calcium channel blockers we are usually we are giving 10 mg twice daily then uh, angiotensin receptor blockers angiotensin receptor blocker actually it's a uh, anti hypertensive medication losartan 25 mg daily we are giving uh, then selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors fluoxetine that is 20 mg once daily then alpha blockers prazosin alpha blockers 500 microgram twice daily then angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ace inhibitors here we are usually using lisinopril 5 mg once daily to 20 mg once daily that is based on the weight of the patient so uh, then the phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitors that we are not using commonly then vasodilators like nitroglycerin also can be used then antiplatelets that also can be used so uh, antiplatelets platelets mainly in order to reduce the tightening of the blood vessels okay the clotting can be prevented so uh, the drug therapy mainly calcium channel blockers and hypertensives then ac inhibitors then the alpha blockers this is the main drug then nitroglycerin and antiplatelets are the additional drugs that can be prevent the uh, thickening thickening of the blood 
then avoid triggering factors means uh, here where the person has to uh, avoid the exposure to cold then uh, exposure to emotional stress emotional stress can be avoided and all the uh, preventive measures the person have to follow that is uh, avoid triggering factors okay the person should be aware of his own condition and avoid the risk of rhinos disease then uh, next thing is by your feedback especially emotional stress it's a factor for rhinos disease so by feedback uh, mechanism that will helps to reduce the stress of the person that's why uh, the rhinos disease can be removed or uh, can be reduced next one surgical management in surgical management usually surgical debridement of necrotic tissue sympathectomy that is uh, in order to reduce the pain sympathectomy we are uh, removing or the sympathetic nerve okay amputation or the un uh, amputation for the uh, uncontrolled spasm or the uh, ulceration or necrotized tissue is present we are doing the amputation then chemical injection of botulinum uh, that will be helpful for the patient botulinum injection so these all are the management that we are giving for the rhinos disease patient so on complications uh, especially deformities of the fingers and toes gangrene leads to amputation and ulceration these are the main complications of rhinos disease so in rhinos disease what we have done is what is rhinos disease what is the uh, etiology of rhinos disease there are two types of rhinos disease primary and secondary and we have seen the pathophysiology clinical features diagnostic measures and the management Thank you.